Hello, welcome to GTEC Techno Solution Private Limited. We are going to discuss about the interview questions based on reinforcement concrete elements. Our first question is You have to list out the advantages of reinforced cement concrete when compared with other building materials. So what are the advantages of reinforced concrete? The following are the advantages. If you see, concrete is workable when green and strong when hardens. So it can be molded into any required shape and size. The raw materials required are easily available. Skill is not required for casting concrete elements. Concrete is durable, fire resisting and rigid. Concrete requires less maintenance. Hence, reinforced concrete is advantageous than the other building materials. Our next question is, you have to list out the disadvantages of reinforced cement concrete when compared with the other building materials. So the disadvantages of reinforced cement concrete are as follows. The self weight of structural elements will be more when you use concrete and hence dismantling and reusing of concrete elements are mostly not possible. If you see concrete has poor insulating property, so that causes the concrete to be brittle in nature and hence has low impact in resisting capacity. So these are the disadvantages of reinforced cement concrete when compared with the other building materials. Our next question is, what are the different types of loads that have to be considered in the design of a building? The different types of loads that have to be considered in the design of a building are the following points which includes dead load, live load, wind load, snow load and earthquake load. So these are the different types of loads that has to be considered in the design of a building. Moving on to our next question we have, what is meant by working stress method or what does the working stress mean? Working stress method is based on the elastic theory in which the materials concrete and steel are assumed to be stressed well below their elastic limit and they are under the design loads. So this is what is meant by working stress method. Our next question is what are the different methods used in design of reinforced concrete members? So the different methods used in the design of reinforced concrete members are as follows. Working stress method or modular ratio method, ultimate load method or load factor method and the final one is limit state method. So these are the different methods used in the design of reinforced concrete members. Our next question is define under reinforced section. If your record beam reaches its permissible stress in steel 
and the working moment before concrete reaches its stress is called as under reinforced section the section that is having actual neutral axis less than the critical neutral axis is known as your under reinforced section so this is what is meant by under reinforced section moving on to our next question we have what is singly reinforced section the section reinforced in tension zone is known as singly reinforced section whereas what is meant by doubly reinforced section the section reinforced in both tension and compression zone is known as doubly reinforced section so here you have tension zone alone whereas if you see in double you have both tension and compression zone our next question is what is meant by limit state a limit state is a state of impending failure beyond which a structure ceases to perform its intended function satisfactorily in terms of either safety or serviceability so that is meant by your limit state moving on to our next question we have classify the slabs depending on the direction of spanning direction of distribution of loads so if you see the slab depending on the direction of spanning can be classified into two one way slab and two way slabs so these are the two types of slabs depending on the direction of spanning what is meant by one way slab the ratio of long span to short span is greater than or equal to 2 then the slab is defined to be a one way slab or a slab spanning in one direction if the ratio is greater than or equal to 2 then the slab is defined to be one way slab our next question is define two way slab if the ratio of long span to short span is less than or equal to 2 the slab is to be defined as two way slab or slab spanning in one direction so this is known as your two way slab where your ratio of long span and short span is less than or equal to 2 next question is list the types of beams based on structural application the types of beams based on structural application are as follows rectangular beam t beam and l beam so these are the types of beams based on your structural application Our next question is what do you understand by flank beams the concrete in the slabs which is on the compression side of the beam that is in the middle portions of your continuous beams can be made to resist the compression forces and the steel in the tension side of the beam can carry the tension so these combined beam and slab units are called as your flanged beams we 
Moving on to our next question. Define shear strength. Shear strength is nothing but the resistance to sliding offered by the material of the beam is called as your shear strength. So here you have a resistance that is given for the sliding material. So that is known as your shear strength. Our next question is name the different modes of shear failure and sketch it. The different modes of shear failure are as follows. Shear torsion, shear bending, shear bond and shear compression. So these are the modes of shear failure that can possibly occur. Our next question is, what are the types of reinforcement used to resist shear? The types of reinforcement used to resist shear are as follows. Inclined stirrups, vertical stirrups and bent up bars with vertical stirrups. So these are the types of reinforcement used to resist your shear.